Hey, welcome back. If you have subscribed to the channel, then I'm pretty sure that you'd be familiar with Miller Compensation. Additionally, you'd know about the RHP0 that manifests itself due to the feedforward path through the Miller capacitor. Not just that, but the addition of a zero nullifying resistor in series with the Miller capacitor helps to ameliorate this issue by moving the zero to the left half plane and perhaps cancelling one of the poles and even probably yielding a phase margin or a phase gain to say. With that brief background in place, let's look at what a pole zero doublet is and briefly analyze its implications on the settling of a negative feedback system. The reference for this video is this seminal paper by Dr. Kamath published in JSSC in 1974. The authors considered an open loop amplifier having one zero and two poles. Next, they examined the effect of the pole zero spacing on the closed loop unity gain step response. To keep the analysis more practical, they even incorporated the effect of slewing in the input stage. The block diagram is as shown where the open loop DC gain is A, the unity gain bandwidth is represented by omega C naught and omega B and omega Z form the pole zero doublet. Note that the open loop dominant pole is omega Z naught by A. In order to analyze the step response of such a system, I won't go through the exact derivation, but the procedure is as follows. You first compute the closed loop transfer function. Next, you use the dominant pole approximation. And in this case, you can take an approximation that omega C naught is much, much greater than omega P, meaning that the pole lies within the bandwidth. Then you express the transfer function as partial fractions and you take the inverse Laplace transform to get the time domain expressions. In the reference, the authors have done the analysis to get the expression for V out as a function of time, which is equal to V in into one minus K one times exponential of minus omega C naught T plus K two times exponential of minus omega two omega Z T. And this expression is valid for T greater than T S where T S is the slewing period. Additionally, you have the constraint that K1 plus K2 is 1 you, and K2 is min, omega Z minus omega P by omega C naught. You get these when you actually do the derivations. The first term here is expected since the UGB should determine the settling behavior. However, the second term suggests that we have a slow settling component with an amplitude proportional to the doublet frequency spacing and time constant proportional to 1 over the doublet frequency. Here is where the fun part starts. The authors fix the UGB, omega C naught, at 6.1 megahertz. I'm not sure if they meant omega radians per second or not, but that doesn't matter. Next, they plotted the Bode plot for two cases. One, when there's no doublet. In that case, you would simply have a first order behavior with the dominant pole at omega C naught over A. The second case is when the doublet spacing given by omega z by omega p is 1.32 and omega p is at 18 kilohertz, which is much lesser than the UGB. So the changes in the frequency response were almost imperceptible. Just note that the Bode plot is plotted for the open loop transfer function. So the first dominant pole is at omega c naught by a, then you encounter the second pole at omega p and soon you get a zero, which restores the phase to minus 90 degrees. So the bottom line is that the changes in the frequency response were almost indistinguishable. Next, the authors studied the transient step response and recorded the settling time. They placed the doublet at two frequencies of 18 kHz and 180 kHz. So the 18 kilohertz frequency, which I'll call the low frequency doublet and the 180 kilohertz, I'll call the high frequency doublet. Both are well below the UGB of omega C naught. The summary of their experiment was that the low frequency doublet gave a response which persisted for longer, but with a smaller amplitude, as can be seen by the expression for V out. 
on the contrary the high frequency doublet resulted in a response that died out faster but with a larger amplitude so for a very tight settling for example 0.01% in their experiment the slow decay of the low frequency doublet became problematic however for a not a, for not a very tight settling meaning for a longer error tolerance or a larger error tolerance the low frequency doublet would settle faster since its amplitude is much smaller than the high frequency doublet and thus it doesn't affect as much that being said i wonder what you guys think about such type of videos wherein i discuss research papers let me know in the comments what you think and i recommend you watch this video next which might teach you something new see you in the next one and happy learning